Number 8. Sherry Papini California woman Sherry Papini disappeared in the afternoon of November the 2nd of 2016 after going for a run through the rural neighborhood surrounding her Reading residence. Papini's husband tracked her cell phone to a location less than a mile from their home at the intersection of Old Oregon Trail and Sunrise Drive, but the mother of two herself was nowhere to be found. The 34-year-old family then began to fear that she'd been kidnapped and a massive search operation was set into motion. Rescue crews used scent dogs and helicopters to comb the area, but for the first few weeks, the search failed to yield any results. Eventually, on Thanksgiving Day, Papini was found bound with restraints on the side of the road near the city of Woodland. She had reportedly suffered a number of injuries, including a broken nose and a mark on her shoulder that appeared to have been inflicted with a branding iron. In subsequent interviews with investigators, Papini claimed to have been abducted by a pair of Spanish-speaking women on the day she'd gone missing. Her captors had allegedly kept her chained in a closet and would periodically beat her at gunpoint and brand her with the red-hot tool. Papini was able to provide the FBI with detailed physical descriptions of the two supposed assailants, which sketch artists used to create composite images that were then released to the public. In March of 2022, however, disturbing details came to light regarding the true nature of Papini's abduction. According to a Department of Justice press release, the woman had fabricated the story of her disappearance and had actually been voluntarily staying with her ex-boyfriend in Costa Mesa, as her family was desperately searching for her. Papini also reportedly went so far as to harm herself in order to support the false statements she subsequently gave to the authorities. When federal agents confronted her with evidence of her deception, Papini refused to recant her previous testimony and even provided more false details about her purported abductors. She was consequently arrested and charged with making false statements to a federal law enforcement officer and engaging in mail fraud. Number 7. Natalie Schlett and Micah Reisner Shortly after 9 p.m. on March the 9th, of 2017, police officers in Sandusky, Ohio, rushed to a home in the 600 block of Meigs Street in response to reports that a homicide had occurred on the premises. Upon their arrival, however, the officers found that the homeowners, identified as Natalie Schlett and Micah Reisner, had staged the former's gruesome murder. The alarm was raised after they'd sent a picture of her supposedly lifeless body to their family. Reisner later detailed how he'd wiped ketchup all over the bathroom after Schlett assumed a pose in the tub that made it appear as if she was dead. After they'd shared a picture of the grisly scene with Reisner's sister via Facebook Messenger, several concerned friends who were unaware that it was actually a hoax contacted the police. It subsequently emerged that the couple had come up with the stunt as an attempt to get Reisner's sister to come to their house with the intention of confronting her for allegedly stealing money from them. The prank ultimately had unintended consequences for the engaged couple as they were charged with inducing panic in the incident's aftermath. Number 6. Clovino da Silva On August 3rd of 2019, at the end of the regularly scheduled visited hours, guards at the Banju jail complexes in Brazil spotted a suspicious individual attempting to leave through the front doors. Rio de Janeiro's deputy head of prison operations later detailed how one of the detention officers on duty quickly realized that a woman who was walking out of the facility was actually an inmate in disguise. The prisoner was restrained and taken back inside, at which point he was identified as Clovino da Silva, a drug dealer from the city of Angra dos Reis, who was serving a 73-year prison sentence. In a video released by prison authorities, the silver was shown removing the various components of his disguise, which included a plastic mask, a wig, glasses, and women's clothes. Investigators reportedly believed that the constituting elements of the elaborate facade had been smuggled into the jail by a pregnant woman who hadn't undergone the same rigorous searches as other visitors. It's a relatively widespread aspect that, in many prison systems, has led to pregnant women being used to transport contraband. It later emerged that De Silva's plan had been to leave his 19-year-old daughter inside the prison in his stead. She and seven others were reportedly arrested in connection to the ruse, while De Silva himself was transferred to another jail unit and held in solitary confinement as punishment. A few days later, it was reported that De Silva had been found dead in his jail cell from an apparent hanging. Number 5. Samantha Ely 
Texas woman Samantha Ely approached a group of teenagers as they were playing on the swings at a Fort Worth park on October the 23rd of 2019. Ely shouted at them to leave immediately, and the ensuing confrontation was recorded by an individual at the scene and went viral on social media in the aftermath. As was shown in the video, Ely marched up to the teens and loudly declared that they were too old to be on the playground equipment. The 38-year-old then tried to push one of the teenagers off the swing and unloaded an expletive-laden rant in which she identified herself as a police officer and threatened to arrest them. In a second video captured later that same day, Ely was shown harassing parents in a different section of the park. She appeared to push her way through a group of adults in order for her own child to use the equipment. The woman told the other parents that their children were too old to be in the play area, something that she claimed to know for a fact because she owned the park. While Ely maintained that children over the age of six were prohibited from using the park's rides and equipment, another parent pointed out that a nearby sign indicated the playground was meant for those aged 5 to 12. The Fort Worth Police Department later released a statement in which they clarified that Ely wasn't, in fact, a police officer, and the woman was consequently charged with one count of impersonating a public servant. Number 4. Audrey Franciscini on the morning of May the 10th of 2021, several students at the American Senior High School in Hialeah, Florida, were approached by an individual who was roaming the halls and distributing pamphlets that promoted her Instagram page. She was wearing a backpack and carrying a skateboard in an attempt to portray herself as a student. But it would later emerge that the person passing out flyers was actually 28-year-old Audrey Franciscini. A security guard approached a woman at one point and asked, what she was doing to which Franceschini reportedly replied that she was looking for the registration office. She then wandered off and continued giving students her personalized literature as they entered their classrooms. Police later detailed how she was once again questioned by security but simply walked away and ultimately left the grounds a short time later. After a few hours, Franceschini was arrested by local police and charged with felony trespassing, misdemeanor interfering with a school, and resisting arrest without violence. Subsequent reports indicated that Franceschini had previously worked as a law enforcement officer in Georgia. She had been fired in 2017 after allegedly hacking into a colleague's social media account and posting an explicit photograph of them online. Number 3. Christopher Tomberlin In 2015, authorities in Bibb County, Georgia issued an arrest warrant for local man Christopher Tomberlin who was accused of biting his girlfriend and throwing a hatchet at her during a domestic dispute at their Mason residence. He was taken into custody on charges of aggravated assault, battery and making threats. Reports later surfaced that following his release from jail on bond, Tomberlin had passed away due to an undetermined cause and there was even a Facebook post announcing his death. A few years later in May of 2021, the Oklahoma City Police Department received an anonymous tip that Tomberlin was still alive and living in the Oklahoma City metro area under an alias. On May the 27th, the man was located and arrested by a joint task force composed of U.S. Marshals and local police officers. Investigators concluded that Tomberlin had faked his own death before fleeing nearly a thousand miles from Mason to Oklahoma City. He'd successfully remained undetected for roughly six years, using several different fake identities to avoid raising suspicion. It was reported that Tomberlin was working from home as a freelance tattoo artist at the time of his capture. Today's topic was requested by Standing Tall These Culture Vultures. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Paul Anthony Menchaca on September the 6th of 2018, Paul Anthony Menchaca was taken into police custody at his parents' house in Gilbert, Arizona. Leading up to his arrest, investigators had spoken with three women who'd all testified that Menchaca had lied to them about his medical condition to solicit their caretaking services. The 31-year-old man reportedly used online service providers such as CareLinks and Care.com to find workers willing to serve as his caregivers. Police reported that Menchaca would pose as his mother, Amy, and claimed that he had Down syndrome and therefore needed workers to bathe him and change his diapers. One of the victims of his exploitative scheme claimed to have assisted Menchaca with up to 30 diaper changes and baths during her time as his caretaker. To make his deception as believable as possible, Menchaca also allegedly took on a childlike demeanor and threw temper tantrums 
on several occasions. One of the victims eventually grew suspicious that Menchaca's condition was actually a fabrication and she followed him to his parents' house, where he was dropped off by another caretaker. She confronted the man's parents who confirmed that Menchaca didn't have Down syndrome and wasn't required to wear diapers or be assisted in the manner in which he'd been. The man was ultimately criminally charged in connection to his predatory ruse. Menchaca formerly served as a crossing guard for the Chandler Unified School District, although it was reported that he'd resigned from the position in the wake of his arrest. Number 1. Josh Paler Lin and Leah Say In April of 2021, a pair of social media influencers staged a prank video in which one of them attempted to gain entry into an Indonesian supermarket by painting a blue surgical mask on her face instead of actually wearing one. US-based YouTuber Josh Paler Lin and Russian Instagram influencer Leah Se devised the stunt after they were turned away from the store for failing to comply with the COVID-19 mask mandate set in place in the country's Bali province. In an attempt to trick the supermarket security personnel, they applied blue makeup to Se's face to make it appear as if she was wearing a face covering. The ploy initially worked and the tourists filmed themselves walking around the store, noting in the footage that very few people seem to notice Say's fake mask. The stunt quickly went viral after Lin and Say posted the recording online and it was eventually brought to the attention of Indonesian immigration officials. The two influencers were then taken into custody for breaching Bali's pandemic regulations and they were detained in an immigration center pending their deportation from the country. Under normal circumstances, first-time violators of Bali's COVID-19 rules would have only been fined roughly $70. However, local authorities sought to have the pair of foreigners removed from the island immediately, given the overtly deliberate nature of their infraction. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have a bunch of fake friends that you know don't actually care about you or no friends at all? Let us know in the comments section below.